This is Coogan Cassius for Eiffel TV in association with MTK Global. Beautiful day Hot here. Roast. You're wearing a three stripe Adidas full on, I don't know what material that is, but heavy material tracksuit. Just come from the gym. Have you? I see your Instagram stuff lately. What's going on? Is what? this a new, new thing? It works. Why don't you use it more? What, the gym? <laughs> no, no, Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm started. I've started. Yeah, I've started. Just, just Those numbers are unbelievable. I know. What, what are you what are you peeking at? Like, well, I put a thing out this morning with OD. That's had twenty five thousand followers, uh, views. Views. I did one the other day, just Ali G movie. Yeah. Forty eight thousand people. Incredible. And I haven't even really got that many Instagram followers. Instagram stories seems to be the new thing on social media. Yeah, I'm getting on it. It's so hot. Normally, you join me in a. I haven't joined you in a while, but it's coming thing. soon. It's coming soon. Um, right, where should we start? Let's start in Germany. Yes. Um, disappointed with Paul Smith? Uh, or? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, there was a lot made about the fight whether he should have got it, whether he should have been ranked. And the fact is, I've always said to people, we got a phone call asking if Paul Smith wants to fight Tyrone Zoyga. What do you want to say? No? I mean, you know, good money, shot at a world title. Um, he was just the right guy. If someone phoned you up and said, do you want to go and present the Oscars next next week? Called and zeal. Yeah. What would you say? Fucking right. Do you deserve to present the Oscars? Probably not. What are you going to do? And that, that's the truth of it. He was the right opponent for German TV. He'd done two fights with Arthur Abraham. One was a really close fight. He was the good the good opponent for this young German kid. So um, I think Paul would be disappointed with his performance. I don't think he quite took as many chances as maybe he should have. But he was also getting countered a lot. He was very sharp, Zeuger. He wobbled Zeuger in the third round. But then he had a real go in 11 and 12. It was just the middle rounds. I wanted him to try and press the action a little bit more but you know I think age is catching up with him and uh, certainly at that level at world level that's his lot now um, I think he knows that whether he wants to come back and have a domestic fight you know Fielding Murray these kind of fights financially I think it could work for him um, but whether he wants to be at that level or not is up to him but you know, our job will be to present the opportunities if he wants to carry on but certainly at world level no, that was his last crack of the whip. Yeah, I know people, obviously, they've had their opinion tweeting um, the WBA man, Gilbert. Oh, it's just, you're right, if it's presented to Paul, what's he going to say? Exactly. I just, a few, was, people, a few people don't think I should have it. But. No, but sometimes sometimes you get a little bit of luck on your side, you know, and you get opportunities maybe. And I got a bit of stick because I said, you know, he's given a lot to the sport. Oh, what's he given to the sport? He's dedicated his whole life to the sport of boxing. So you can't, you can never, or you should never, be upset by people who have given a lot to something getting a break or a crack. Someone says, oh, well, he got two shots before. Yeah, but so what? <laughs> good luck to people. Fucking someone wins a lottery. Does he deserve to win the lottery? Maybe not, but fucking good luck to him. I hope you go and have a lovely life, you know? That's, that should be the attitude of people. You've got to be more, I've said it to you before, you've got to be more, you've got, you've got to be more happy for people to do well. You know, don't look at anyone and think, fucking hope he, if you're that kind of person, fucking hope that geezer fucking fails in business, hope he loses a fortune on that, hope he gets knocked out. You're, you, it's bit of vibes, mate. Bit of vibes are no good. Happy vibes only in this place. You know, we're sitting here, look, we've got the new Matrim flag. Yeah, what does that mean? Is that half mast at the moment? Well, it was. Uh, the guys who work here wanted to get a present from my old man. It was his birthday yesterday. So they got a Matrim flag in the middle of the garden, which he's like, he loves, he loves things like that. So, can, does it go higher? What? Does it go higher? Well, well that is quite high. No, but what I'm saying is, say you have a really good bang pay-per-view night where you yeah. killed it, you know, yeah. with your 20%. Does that go right up? No, it's that's it's at full height right now because we're absolutely buzzing. Obviously, someone gets beat or you know we have a bad pay-per-view, it'll go at half mast. All right. So, but that's not going to happen for a while. So. Okay. Um, yeah, that's the plan. Just keep it keep it all the way up. Um, obviously, I was out in Vegas for Cobb yeah. and Ward. Yeah. Like, 
I was a bit disappointed, really, because I think it was a really big fight. I didn't feel it, you know? I didn't, just the whole hype, the press conferences, the weigh-ins, I don't know. And I was a bit gay, because I bought it. Me, I bought it, by the way, out of our money, boxing money. Because as a boxing fan, I bought it, and it didn't really buy it. So when it all finished, and I sort of looked at the numbers, even our numbers, you know, I sort of expected a bit more. Mm. I don't know if you felt the same. You know, I don't know what it is. Like, you get two guys who, they hate each other, those two, right? And it's not bullshit. It's not hype. They hate each other. More so than cover. So what do you yeah. do in that situation? You fucking get them in front of each other as many times as possible, you know? Um, he walks out of the press, so they don't really have a chance to engage. The key when you've got that animosity is let them spend time around each other. Let the public see it. Let the public feel the rivalry. You can't feel the rivalry when the only time they were together was launch press conference, final press conference, and one guy left halfway through. So, Do you know what really baffled me in that whole promotion? What baffles you, old boy? So you got Cappy Duva, what is it, main events? Mm -hmm. you got Rock Nation. Mm -hmm. The biggest person involved in that promotion, Jay-Z, is nowhere to be seen it's all week. It's a funny week. old setup, isn't it? What, what, why is that? What, what? I've no idea. And I don't know how long Rock Nation's future is in boxing. I don't know how seriously they're taking it now. Obviously, they've lost Cotto. They did a bizarre deal with Ward where they're guaranteeing him like probably twice as much as they should have guaranteed him for, in terms of the value of that fight. Still, brilliant fighter. Number one pound for pound in the world for me. Um, but yet, you have a guy that could systematically spike the pay-per-view through his involvement, not being involved. No tweets. Hmm. No social media presence, no turning up to any events. Weird, really weird. Which makes me think that there is no long-term strategy for Rock Nation in boxing because how can you not? It's a strange one. I, I don't know. What did the first pay-per-view do? 160, 170? I'd be shocked if that did more. Shocked. Hmm. And you know what? When that fight was made, the first thing I said was... That'll do double next time. Well, you'd have thought it would. It would, if it was if it was promoted properly. Mm. And it wasn't. You know, I spoke to the guys at Sky, they just said the press conferences, everything, all it is is stand up for an hour and a half thanking everyone and chewing them off. You know? Oh, thank you to Richard Sturm at the MGM. Thank you to HBO. Thank you to this. Thank you to... You should get whoever owns the O2 on the table oh, next time. I know. What do I want to thank him for? I'm giving him a fortune. <laughs> but... It's not that. People don't want to see that, do they? No. People want to see, and it, there are so many different dynamics in that fight that you could have exploited. Virgil Hunter, what a great character, great controversial character with so many opinions, not afraid to speak his mind. The Kovalev trainer, David Jackson, is it? John David John, Jackson. John David Jackson, again, same. Kathy Duva. Right? Who lost it in yeah. the post fight? Oh, she's gold. <laughs> she's gold. You know what I mean? Absolutely. James Prince. Yeah. Like he's a he's a top yeah. boy. He's up there. You know. Oh, mate, it's like that. That's so frustrating watching that. Of what, dare I say it? What I could do with that fight and those camps and those teams. If I was promoting that show, right? I would guarantee you not one buy less than three hundred thousand buys. And that probably sounds very arrogant. But deep down, you know it. You know it. You know it watching this, that I could have smashed that pay-per-view. Great fight. I could, like, pound for pound, one of the best fights in world boxing with two guys that hate each other. And you can't do 170,000 pay-per-view buys. They just did Canelo Chavez for over a million, million. buys. Yeah. It was a complete mismatch. Frustrating. Um, the fight, and, is, yeah, go on. the fight itself. Um, well, we're not going to dwell too I much on this. I watched it back last night for the first time. Really interesting fight, and actually gutted that it didn't go. Yeah, was it stopped too early? Yeah, you probably have to say it was. Like, what? it's one of them where the fight, in my opinion, the fight was over. Kovalev was done. Yeah, he was done. He didn't want to know. Hmm. Ward was actually beating him up, which really surprised me. Um, but you can't deny that Ward hit him low and he should have either had a count or time. If the, and actually, put it this way, 
If the ref felt that it wasn't a low blow, he should have had a count. If the ref did think it was a low blow, he should have been given the time to recover. So they're the two things that should have happened. Stoppage, it shouldn't have been. But he was done. But that's irrelevant, isn't it? It's a bit like Frotch Groves won. In my opinion, they were 15 seconds away from stopping him brutally. But it was stopped too early. You know? So you can't really sit there and say, yeah, yeah, but Kovalev was done. Can you? It's a bit like you score a goal in football and it's gone over the line, but they do use the goal, te goal line technology, but it's 4 0. And this is to go 5 0. Oh, yeah, it don't matter, does it? It's 4 0. But it does because it's, you've got to follow the rules. And the rules are he was hit low. He should have been given the time to recover. Or if he didn't think he was hit low and he was hurt, he probably should have had a count. But he was done anyway. If for me, he didn't want to know. And that surprises me about Kovalev. And as Marvin Hagler said, it's very hard to get up on your morning runs when you're wearing silk pyjamas. Remember that line. Does Sergei Kovalev have the same mindset, the same animal crusher mindset that he had when he laced up the grubs as a pro? One of the most bizarre things in boxing. What? Nathan Cleverly picking Kovalev as a voluntary. Well, I don't think he picked that. I think he was that was put on him. That was put to him, and he accepted it because he's a fighter, and that's what fighters do. But that was one of the most shameful pieces of matchmaking ever ever do, made do, in boxing. Do you remember? I spoke to you. You was out there, weren't you? Mm. Uh, I was at the Darren Barker fight. Yeah, yeah but and Kovalev was yeah. back in mass. And you said. And no one really knew who Kovalev was then. In the UK, yeah. Yeah, in the UK. And you went, uh, do you know what? They're all saying this geezer Kovalev's going to do cleverly. I, 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 <laughs> sat, I sat down um, to watch that fight in an empty arena before Darren Barker started, uh, that his doors open with HBO because they were doing a double header that night. I can't remember who it was from HBO. I sat down, I went, you know what? I went, I don't really know about his Kovalev, but everyone thinks he's going to beat cleverly, but I can't see it. The geezer looked at me, he went, Ed, he went, this is a mismatch. He went, watch this. And it come out, and he, you know, it was, mm. it was one of them. Um, so, but, you didn't answer my question. Go on, what was it? Is, does Kovalev still have that animal instinct, that desire that he had when he boxed cleverly? Because he didn't look like it to me. Mm. The great fighters keep that, regardless of, of the riches, regardless of, of the fruits of the game. Very difficult. Very difficult. Na Naz the same, I think, your mate. And you can't blame him, can you? Mm. It's a horrible game. It's horribly tough. Can you imagine now? I had O'Hara in an hour ago. Just done me, you know, done me first session. It was like nine o'clock, done me first session. Just waiting for me next session now, 12 rounds of sparring. How hot it is in that gym? Who's he sparring? Um, loads of people. Um, and it's tough, tough. And when you've got the money, when you've got the rewards of the game, the houses and the cars, the things you never had, do you still want it? That's all about loving your job, isn't it? It doesn't matter if you're a fighter, if you're doing what you're doing. I'll ask you the same question. You're making good money now out of the business. If you started trebling that, quadrupling that, Buying a house, buying this, buy you know, do you still want it? Do you want to be traipsing up to Newcastle on Friday for a next gen show? Yeah. Exactly. But that's called passion. And that's called the love of the game. I love this game. <laughs> and it's hard. It's it's not it's not quite as hard as sitting sitting in a car and going up to Newcastle as it is to get up at six in the morning, do hill sprints, have an hour kip, do twelve rounds of sparring, come back, do your strength and conditioning go in and have a war with another geezer with 10 ounce gloves on. I can appreciate that. Yes. Um, right, so... So you got where I was going with it. I did. Good. Did um, Rock Good. Nation get in contact the next morning? With you? For what? Andre Ward versus Anthony <laughs> Joshua. <laughs> no, I didn't know where that come from. I've got loads of tweets about it. Was it Virgil? Virgil. Yeah, yeah. No, it's not on the agenda. You imagine those two next to each other. I'd get run out of town. Right. Do you know what? Virgil said to you. did get in contact with me. Cool. Tony Bell, you. About what? Andre Ward. He said, I'll fight him for my WBC. Hmm. I was like, hmm. Money's not as good. He said, I don't really care. He said, I'll beat him up. Good fight. Hmm. 
good fight. Because Andre Ward, as I said earlier, for me is pound for pound number one. As much as I love Tony Bell, you like a brother, he ain't pound for pound number two. But with the weight, I think you know, Tony's well in that fight. And as he does all the time, proves people wrong. But Cruiserweight maybe, heavyweight's a bit of a stretch. No, I, don't, I, I just think Virgil was just gassed on the win. Do you know what I mean? You see Andre's reaction when he like... Andre's a cool cat, isn't he? Hmm. Very. Um, he speaks really well. Just a quick note. Did you see Rigan Dow? Yeah. That was bizarre. Yeah, and he should have either... But well, they're, they're, they're turning. No yeah, they're, 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 they're going it to, about, yeah. It wasn't like the one... You know who's Cat's guy against the mm. rail? That was like a combination and like... Ding, 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 crash. This was like... Ding, 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 crash. You know what I mean? But they were conferring for about 15 it's minutes. Bizarre. And they gave him the win. Yeah, no. It's, um, do you disqualify him or do you make it a no contest? If you make it a no contest, you're saying that he's hit him after the bell, aren't you? So yes. therefore, if he's knocked him out after the bell, how's it not a disqualification? Yeah, point. Um, the big news in Vegas last week mm. was the announcement of um, Floyd Mayweather and... The money fight. Conor McGregor. We've spoken about this loads of times. Mm. It's Actually, we've been speaking about it for about a year and yeah. a half. See an old video with me, you and Bellew from, yeah, literally a year and a half ago. Good for the sport or not? Probably good for boxing. Probably. Yeah, I mean, you know my opinion. I think Floyd Mayweather wins the fight easy. But you've seen from the reaction, the amount of people that are talking about it, the amount of people that are... Um, Debating who's going to win the fight, how it's going to play out. I mean, I had one guy telling me the other day, I was talking, I can't remember who I was, it might have been in a cab or something, telling me that, oh, I'm going to watch it because I reckon Floyd Mayweather's going to take him down and, and start grappling him. I'm like, <laughs> I know, but this is some of the things that people are talking about. So there's the fascination of what will happen. Um, I, I know what's going to happen. But you don't really, do you? Yeah. You don't know how long it's going to be prolonged for. You don't know if it's... Like, what if it actually goes a few rounds? Can you see that happening? Yeah, I can see that. No, I can see it going many rounds. But it, it, I don't think he'll hit Floyd. I, I think Cron Conor McGregor is an absolute legend. Like, I want to make that clear. It's not like this geezer's just... A, he is taking away the fact that he's an unbelievable MMA fighter. This guy's an incredible self-promoter. This guy's come from nothing and carved out a fortune for himself through being outspoken, being controversial, and being very good at what he does. So this comes back to fucking good luck to him, mate. But I'm a fan. Everyone's got an opinion. My opinion is he doesn't touch. He doesn't lay a glove on Floyd Mayweather for 12 rounds if it goes that way. Um, well, you don't think he beats Ted Cheeseman, so. But he doesn't. It, but that's not a criticism of of. of Conor McGregor, he's not a boxer. Stick Ted Cheeseman in an MMA fight with uh, McGregor, he's going to sleep. But that was the comparison that I'm giving between the levels of... But I'm shocked by the um, <coughs> the noise, I'm shocked by the interest, and it's a massive, massive fight. So Do you expect it to come the other side of Canelo and Golovkin? No, but they did it for a reason, didn't yeah. they? Yeah. They've completely killed that fight. Killed the fight. Canelo Golovkin is a great fight. But it is going to get absolutely swamped by that. Swamped. And they will do everything they can to swamp it. And it was smart, smart move. Why go end of September after Canelo Golovkin? They're still their thunder. Pure tactics. Does it do more buys than the Pacquiao fight? Yeah, great question. I would have said no, I said yes. but I think yes. And I think that's because, don't underestimate, the draw of Conor McGregor. Mm. Look at the social media numbers, the interaction figures when the announcements. Yeah, but McGregor's huge. Is McGregor bigger than Mayweather? Good question. Very good question. You can interact with oh. us here on social media. You can hashtag Maybigger, hashtag MacBigger. 
So just if people didn't know, when they, they tweeted at the same time. Yeah, and what was Connor like, 27,000, no, 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 Mayweather was 97,000 right. retweets. Conor McGregor was 260,000. Yeah, you, you can't necessarily relate that to commercial value, but it is a good it's indication. Slight indication. But there's a, lot of, there's a lot of people who have huge commercial value that don't have as many followers on Twitter hmm. that somebody else does. So, but... It does give some kind of indication, but how big are they? I mean, I, I think a year ago, Floyd was much bigger, mm. but now, maybe not. wonder what the split was. What do you reckon? wonder what the split was. What do you reckon? Surely you can find out. Oh, I doubt it. Um, 60-40, 60 Floyd? Maybe a little bit more for I'm sure he'd give that. Would McGregor take 30%? Is Cleverly going to be on the card? Hopefully, yeah. Yeah, we're trying to do Cleverly spoke to be Jack. Me. Yeah, I spoke to Badu the other day. Yeah. I mean, the problem you got now, and I had a good chat with Nathan about this last night, Floyd Mayweather and Conor McGregor, do you think they're going to want to spend any money on this undercard? This is what you're up against. But they need it. In my opinion, they need it. And that's why I'm talking about to Sky... Obviously, we'd like to get this pay-per-view. And that's one of the reasons that you know, we moved a bit of attention in the last two weeks to focus on that. And I don't think they've got themselves in order yet, but I do feel like it needs... I wouldn't be happy running that pay-per-view without any substance on the card or even a UK leg. Do you know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. we've got a good thing going at the moment with Sky pay-per-view. Look at the last... I don't know, how many pay-per-views? Brooke against Golovkin. Joshua against um, Molina with Chisora against uh, White on the card. Bellew against Hay. Um, Joshua against Klitschko. Brooke against Spence with Grove Shudnov. We've delivered value in every pay-per-view and I don't really want to have a pay-per-view that doesn't deliver value because I think we'd be in a position where you lose momentum because now everybody's going to try and do pay-per-view. You've got Box Nation trying to do pay-per-view on Canelo Golovkin. Don't forget the flag. I've done the flag We've already. We've done the flag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right for it, yeah, though. Yeah. <laughs> um, you've got ITV doing pay-per-view. You've got other independent platforms going to try and launch pay-per-view. So we have to be standout in what we do. Massive saturation. I mean, we had this conversation, didn't we? Massive saturation in boxing right now. UK boxing. Huge. So, how interested was Sky in Canelo Golovkin prior to the Mayweather? Interested, but only with a huge UK leg. Because Golovkin against um, Canelo doesn't do as many buys as people think it does as a standalone at four in the morning. And again, the view of the person watching this may be a little bit distorted because they can't... I, I see the numbers from Ward Kovalev at the weekend. You didn't have to pay for it. Do you know what I mean? So, if, if that's the audience for that on Sky, if that was on a subscription channel, i.e. boxing subscription channel, fucking hell. I mean, so how many buyers does Canelo against Golovkin do? My opinion, between 100 and 150,000 buyers at 4.30 4 in the morning. Surely more than that. No. Surely. At four thirty in the morning, yeah, it's a pure hardcore boxing fans fight. If, which our plan would have been, to do White Wilder, what you know, something like that, on the same night, then you're looking three hundred, three fifty. Actually, probably more if it was What White if, you, what if Sky fight. were doing a standalone with Golovkin and Canelo? One hundred to one hundred fifty thousand. Really, miles. that as well. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. You've got to get someone up to pay £16.95 to watch that fight between a guy, Canelo, who, and again, I'm going to get a stick for this, but if you want the truth, you can handle the truth. Canelo is not a big name in the UK, trust me. And Golovkin is through the Brook fight. This is not, this is an unbelievable fight, great fight, but not a huge fight in the UK outside of the hardcore and that was what that's why we when we originally looked at it before Mayweather McGregor um, 
we, we were interested in Canelo Golovkin for sure, with a double up, with some big stuff from the UK. But I don't know, I mean, you didn't ask the question yesterday, did you? About what? If it was Box Nation pay-per-view, if it's so, if you're a Box Nation subscriber, do you have to pay-per-view oh, it? No. Well, the oh, answer is yes. You oh, know. All that was said was that details of it will be, they didn't have the details no, yesterday. But I'm presuming, say, so, yeah. again, maybe wrong, that it doesn't matter whether you're a subscriber or not, you have to pay a pay-per-view on this. I would assume so. Yeah. Which is going to go down like a sack of spuds. Because I believe in their terms and conditions, it says, or not maybe their terms and conditions, even their mission statement, you as a subscriber will not have to pay extra money for additional pay-per-view fights. Well, until they announce but it, But as I said, I everyone's know. trying. It's not just Box Nation. ITV Box Office are doing it, taking liberties on pay-per-view. Other platforms are going to take liberties on pay-per-view because they see the success of Sky and they think there's a fortune out there. Massive saturation in the boxing market in the UK. Strategy, strategy, strategy. Moving on, Dylan White. Hmm. Offers made to Wilder's camp. I'm only going from your tweets. Mm -hmm. You said three offers being made and the third one was... Well, they're all significant. Big. But we were moving up in half a million trenches. I won't tell you where we're at, but you can probably get a good idea. And... Um, I think it's a massive deal, massive offer, massive fight. So, so where do you stand on the last so offer? What, in terms of... Well, have they responded I don't know where Wilder is right now. He hasn't been on social media for a week or so. Did he get arrested the other Yeah, day? but I think he was released, wasn't he? Yeah. Um, he found a bit of weed, didn't they? <laughs> oh, who's, was it Matt Coog? You know what I mean? Well, it probably weren't his, was it? It doesn't matter. He's a fucking world boxing we'll look champion. In your, we'll look in Mark It's probably a little bit... Little bit. <laughs> Hash in there somewhere, not really. Um, so, but the, the bottom line is, he has to fight Stiverne unless a deal can be reached for him not to. With the amount of money that's in the pot, a deal can be reached and Wilder can have the biggest payday of his career so far. Come to the UK, sample the UK market. If you win, we've got the AJ fight, we've got other fights for you over here. You're not making any money in America. Why wouldn't you take it? You know why? Because Dylan White's a fucking handful. And they all know it. Wilder, Parker, all of, they don't want to fight Dylan White. The only one that wants to fight Dylan White, well, the two people who wants to fight Dylan White. Derek. Derek Chisora and Anthony Joshua. Because they want to have a tear up, that's why. Dylan White, this is your chance, sorry. Deontay Wilder, this is your chance. Come to the UK, have a big international fight. There's a big fan base here for you. There's a big market here for you. You can't beat Dylan White. Come on, you're the greatest, aren't you? You're the best, you're the number one in the division. It's only Dylan White. Scrape through Chisora, lost to AJ. <laughs> Easy fight, bro. So, again, what... So, the plan is, yeah. for Dylan White, is to box on August the 19th on the Crawford and Dongo card in Omaha. A <laughs> little bit of US exposure. Yeah. Keep ticking over, waiting for that big one. And we want... End of September, early October, Dillian White, WBC world title in London. So what have they said about your third offer? Which They said, we're going to talk to Deontay Wilder. When was that? Last night. Okay. Optimistic or not? Should be. Listen, a lot does matter on the Stiverne and Don King side, because that has to be dealt with, you know? But I had a meeting with Maurizio Suleiman last week. If, if, if everybody can be happy, mate, I'm proper roasting up here then Maurizio's happy, but obviously everyone's got to be taken care of. If you can't get Wilder, what about Parker? Yeah, for December. He's going to fight Huey Fury in September. He's yeah. got a mandatory. Could look at that for December. Could look at Brazil. What do y'all think about the Lucas Brown fight? Baby Miller. Yeah. Cheryl Miller. Um, but he's going to fight, what, eight-rounder? Yeah, eight, ten-rounder um, mm. on that card. Omaha. Good. Yeah, good good exposure for him, good experience for him. Um, and we're just waiting for that big fight, really. You know, if we can't get Wilder or Parker, we need to push for that mandatory position. Mm. Like I said, and again, a lot of what I say, I know people will think, oh, I'm telling you, they don't want that work with Dylan White. 
he's a right pain in the ass on social media, right? He's a pain in the ass at press conferences because he'll probably have a roll around with you, and he's a double pain in the ass in the ring because he's a tough bastard. Do you really think Wilder's looking at that going, oh, it's a bit lively on Twitter? I don't think I fancy that. Uh, yeah, I, th I think people think, oh, fucking hell, mate, shut up. Like, I'm, I'm looking at Dylan's tweets in the last 24 hours, and I'm almost like, oh, mate, he may just turn around and go, fuck you, you ain't getting a shot. That's some people's mentality. Or he might turn around and go, who's this fucking geezer think he is? Give me the money, let me go and knock him out. Where, where are you with Chisora? I spoke to Chisora yesterday. Mm. He's saying that... No, we're really. It's not. We, uh, Dylan wants to fight for the world title or he wants to fight for a fight that's going to put him in a position to either challenge for the world title or become a mandatory. The Chisora fight doesn't do that. What the Chisora fight does is it gives everyone great entertainment and it makes everyone some money, which is very nice, thank you. And we have to look at those kind of things. Yeah. But my strict instructions from Dylan White is get me a shot at the world heavyweight title and that is what I'm trying to deliver. It's not as easy as that. Um, you know, and if Dylan didn't have a great chin, if he weren't an M4, if he couldn't punch it, I could get the fight easy. Because they don't want these fights. They don't, a lot of these, it's not necessarily the fighters. I'm not saying Deontay Wilder doesn't think he can beat Dylan White. But do you want to send him to the UK to fight Dylan White? Well, you should do for this amount of money and you should do if you think you're any good. You imagine Deontay Wilder comes over and beats Dylan White. How big that sets up the AJ fight. Mm. You imagine if Dillian White, excuse me, I'm absolutely roasting, beats Deontay Wilder, how big that makes Wilder a Joshua against Dillian for the WBA, the IBF, and the WBC World Heavyweight titles. Jeez! The old flag would be flag going be potty. Up. Gold, yeah. painted in gold. What, um, right, some updates from mm. you now. So, you said a little while ago you're expecting Joshua Klitschko to happen. Loughlin saying yesterday that it's still 50-50, so what the fuck is going on? They're just sort of putting the pressure on for us to come up with the numbers for the rematch. So what it means is that we have to present to AJ as well the options and the financials around those options. So that includes Nigeria. Is that still the front runner? Uh, Vegas has come on strong. Oh, how tight. How many Brits... Do we Good take question. to Vegas for that fight? See, I talked about this with someone the other day. Oh, we're not talking Ricky Hatton numbers, are we? Really? Really? I don't know. How many did Ricky Hatton supposedly take? For for the Mayweather fight, there was meant to have been 30,000 people that went over there. Brits? Yeah, okay. apparently. So how many does AJ take? Yeah, but... I know it's not the same like drinking in a pub with Ricky Hatton and... But also, most of them are going out there not to watch it. At, <laughs> they're going to watch it off the screen, didn't they? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. 20? That's a big ask, you know, still. Regardless. You know, it only holds about, what, 16,000? 16,800, 16, I think. But I think if we turn around and said, we're having a party in Vegas, AJ's Vegas debut, who wants to get involved? It's a trip of a lifetime, isn't it? Hmm. I think we take 20,000. Easy. I think I'll go to Morocco that week. Oh, yeah, shit. Yeah, fancy a little trip. I reckon we'll sort you out. Whatever will be, will Can be. Can you delete that tweet that you put out before? It's a bit muggy, though, to delete what, to it. to delete it? it? Yeah, it is. I would never do that. I'd, I can't delete it. I'd rather not go than delete that and tweet. And also, if you ask me to apologise to him, I don't think I can do that either. Mm. That's a problem. So, but I'll leave it in your capable hands okay, anyway. Mate, yeah. Anyone can do it. That's true. It's you. That's true. Yeah, so we've got to present those to Klitschko and Josh what, and say, what? this is this is where we could go. This is the money available. Do you want the fight? So until we do that, yeah, we, we can't expect... Is to, it about... The, the, the decision is, is yes, we're fighting. But it, we want to look at where it's going to happen and how much the money is. Did you hear what Loughlin was saying yesterday? No. It was it was more tailored around whether he actually wants to fight. Yeah. Or not. I think it's more about where the fight is and the occasion. Because I think that's the buzz for Klitschko. An, an extra million or two million, it's nice. It's like a I mil here, a mil there. Yeah, but I don't think that's a defining factor in whether he's no. going to take the fight. I This is what I truly believe. If the deal's right, if the, the setting is right, he will take the fight. 
if it's in Cardiff and the money's like the same as before, kind of been there, done that, do I? You know what I mean? That ain't gonna be in Germany, is it? No, no. Oh. Then you definitely wouldn't be gay. Oh mate, I wouldn't even. I generally wouldn't. A hundred percent, right? A hundred percent in disguise to this fight. You can go. You know, you go to those like film makeup places. Yeah. They could give you a complete different face. White hair, a little bit bald on the top, like down here, pair of glasses, mate, it would be golden. Okay. We'll think of a new name for you. Cougar. No, it has to be like, we're, we're going to go traditional, boxing, historian. Thorsten. We're going to go for Robert Torsten. Robert Thorsten. Torsten, Tor not Thorsten. Robert Torsten. Okay. okay. Give me the you were born in Sweden. Yeah, okay. Stockholm. Yeah. No, Malmo. You were born in Malmo in Sweden. Mm. You were an ex-representative for the Swedish boxing team, Correct. Olympic team. Correct. Okay, then you moved on to analyst and statistician, where you studied the opponents. Then you moved to Vegas because you're a complete boxing nut. And you started just basically helping out around Mike McCullum's gym there in Vegas. You were sweeping up at first. It was really, you had no choice, but you had to get in the game. Then you started running... You studied accounts at university as well. You started running the books for the gym. You got really popular, became popular. Then you started your own podcast. Back in the day when podcasts weren't even that big. But you know everyone around the gyms. You've got a great network of journalists, particularly on the West Coast as well. But you're still known on the East Coast. But a really respected figure in world boxing. You are Robert Tolston and you must be there. Bobby Tolston. Do you think, do you think when they get the uh, media list now and it says... Robert Tolston. They go, we saw your interview with Coogan. Are you taking the piss? No, I know you ain't going to let me down this time. No, 100%. Yeah. <laughs> I know you won't. Um, I didn't let you down last time, but no, I know you didn't. I know you tried. I didn't really get the chance to try. No, no. Anyway, we won't I'm go there. I'm insulting since then. Good. Not, what else? Not majorly. Uh, right, Questions. give me some updates. Bellew Hay, what's going on? Yeah, we've had a chat. I'm not going to say too much about it because sometimes I talk too much about negotiations and it can upset upset people, so I'm sweating me off. Um, we're talking. We're negotiating. We How is he with his fitness, though? Is he Good. is I that mean, on track for the yeah, end of the year? Yeah, if you look at social media and, and yeah. what he's doing, I think it's phenomenal yeah. what he's doing at this stage. David's, um, I, don't, I can't say I know him too well, but what I do know about him, he's a stubborn motherfucker, which doesn't really help in the negotiations but helps in terms of his rehabilitation because he wants to fight Bellew bad he wants to beat him up bad because for all the oh mate you won you would have you know you deserve all this I know if I take the next fight oh it's on your terms it, you know that's not David David's a competitor David wants to bash up Tony Bellew so that's driving him I believe in his rehabilitation they feel like he'll be ready in October but I'd rather do it in December because it gives everybody more time to make sure he is 100%. But I'm, I'm certain David will fight again, and I would like it to be Bellew Hay too. But two stubborn men who, deep down, you know, if you think they were, the beef was quashed, it wasn't. They, they still don't like each other. David Hay thinks Tony Bellew's a complete prick, and Tony Bellew thinks David Hay's a complete prick. That's, that's the truth of it. I, I know one side because I speak to him about it all the time. So. Uh, I'd like to see the fight again. And I'd like to see it over 12 rounds with no excuses, no injuries. I think it's a great fight. Super middleweights. Mm. You can answer all this together. So, what's going on with the gal? What's going on with this tournament mm -hmm. uh, with George Groves in it now? Yeah. Uh, and what's going on with Callum Smith? So, James the gal had a shoulder operation. Don't think he'll be back till towards the end of the year. Yeah. George Groves broke his jaw, but he's going to go in the tournament now. Yeah. Um, Callum Smith may go in the tournament because we lost the first bid, so we're looking at putting that fight into the tournament, which would be good for the tournament because it would have the WBA in one side of the draw, the WBC in the next side of the draw. So where does it relate to the September 9th date? Probably wouldn't be September yeah. 9th. Probably be a couple of weeks later if it was in the tournament. But obviously Durrell's got to sign up for the tournament because Callum is not going in the tournament unless he fights the WBC title. He turned down the Degal fight for loads of money because 
he wants the WBC title. That's what he's been working at for two years. Mm. So, so they both obviously have to be in yeah. that. Yeah, and, and they're talking to Durrell as well. Yeah. Um, so that's that. Yeah. And uh, what was the other one? That was it, wasn't it? Degal, yeah. Degal Grossmith, yeah. So Degal won't be in the tournament. Um, you know, Callum could well be in the tournament. Has Degal got a mandatory? Yes, but now it was Who's Cat's guy. Or is that his name? Yeah. Then he fought Durrell for the interim title because Degal was injured. Yeah. Now it sounds like there's going to be a rematch. So it gives James a bit of time to have a voluntary. Mm. Uh, and coming back from the injury, I would like to see him box at the O2, have a homecoming fight in November, December, and then move on for a, another unification or something uh, early next year. So you've got O2, first, first July. Oh, well, we've got Newcastle on Friday. Oh, Newcastle Pretty Boy Kelly, thing, yeah. Anthony Fowler, Tasha Jonas, who we signed this morning. What? You missed that. That was on social media, mate, from about 10 o'clock. I didn't know that. Signed Natasha Jonas. Debuting on Friday. Really? In Newcastle, yeah. Ah, oh, I like Natasha. Oh, she's good. I mean, I didn't really... I've said to you before, I'm not really looking to sign many female fighters. Joe Gallagher was relentless and said, mate, I'm telling you, this girl can really fight. And then you start looking at the Katie Taylor and Natasha Jonas fight, which is a big fight, and they fought in the Olympics in the quarters or the semis. Um, and we can build that fight. I want to, it's not about signing Natasha Jonas to put her in with Katie Taylor, it's about building her to a world championship and making sure she wins the title and then putting her in with Kate in a unification fight. So I was impressed by Natasha meeting her. I spoke to all the Gallagher's gym boys who said she's she's great. Um, I like her image. She's a Sky ambassador as well. Still managed by Steve? Uh, I believe she's managed by Jonah. Joe, OK. Yeah. Um, I spoke to Steve a while ago and I just said, look, we're not looking at other female fighters and then started speaking to the, the Gallagher's gym boys. Joe just was relentless on it. Met Natasha, spoke to Sky. They really like uh, the carrot of the Katie Taylor fight. Let's do it. So she debuts on Friday. Next gen. Next gen, 1st July. Yeah. Um, then we got August the 19th. Looks like Crawford against Ndongo. Fancy that? Uh, I won't be there. Oh. I'll tell you why after. Okay. If I'm away then. Well, you just told me this. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I'll tell you okay. in a bit. Um, yeah, and then back early September, I think, the O2. Um, How many pay-per-views are you going to have between now and the end of the year? Seven. Ah, no. Um, Joshua Klitschko, or Joshua, someone else. Bellew. Maybe Mayweather. Mayweather, August. And then it's just a case of if we get Wilder against White. So like, U like, UK pay per views, mm, three max, three, yeah. yeah, but maybe two. But Mayweather's a bit of an extra. Yeah, bonus it is. it's in August. Um, you know, it's hard not to do Mayweather McGregor or, or try and do Mayweather McGregor because it does massive numbers. But I still feel it needs a bit of depth to it. Whether that's a UK card, whether that's some UK fighters on a card, cleverly Jack, you know that kind of stuff. But I'm gonna, can I give you a little get out clause? Go on. Right. If Sky get Mayweather McGregor, yeah, and you assist me with the accreditation, mm. then whatever happens with Joshua, whether you sort it out or not, I will not hold it against you. Okay, fine. Just assist. Do you know what? I don't even want a seat for Mayweather McGregor. I just want to be able to go and film then. Like, I want to be able to do the fight week. That's it. I'm not bothered no, about. But all actually. I'll do is. I'll speak to Sky. We've already spoken. Do do we want to get the Mayweather Maria card? Yes. We want to try and get that card. So now the conversations will start. And I'll speak to Sky and say, listen, boys, we've got to get Coogie Bear in. And they'll go, why? I'll say, because he doesn't want to be Robert Tolston for the rematch, so therefore we need this one against the head. <laughs> All right, well, we'll leave I'll try whatever. There. I'll always try for you, you know that. Oh well, no, Edward. Um, right, have you got, before we melt, have you got anything oh, else to say? Um, crawler. We're going to go, which is going to be announced in about an hour, actually. 
to say yeah. it because this won't go out. Uh, Monaco, November fourth. Okay, is the date. Going to build a real Monaco, fun card Monaco, there. Yeah. yeah, maybe Crawler, maybe Quiggy. Do we do Burns Crawler? Um, obviously, we've got Cleverly Jack. We hope to finalise. Um, who else? Don't look like they want to know on McDonald Butler, which is disappointing. So we're going to probably have to do the Solis fight. Got a great fight I'm working on for Ryan Burnett. Um, Back in Belfast when? Sort of October, something like that. When are you going to Liverpool? September, end of September, looks like. Rocky Fielding and Jamie, Jamie Cox, Cox, yeah. yeah. Um, Stephen Smith, hopefully, against Jezreel Corrales for the world title. Um, Joshua... Bellew, Burns, Crawler, all the, hoping to box Boatsy one more time, maybe even in the States, maybe on the Crawford and Dongo card as well. Um, then he'll box September 2nd. Got OD, O'Hara Davis fighting Josh uh, eight, Taylor so on the 8th. Are you going to that? Are you going to that? Yeah. If he sparks him out early, we'll stick him on September 2nd as well. OD told me it won't go two rounds. Won't go two completed rounds. Um... Sam Eggington, really on the verge of a big fight, got to defend his European title. Kalia Fire has got a mandatory against Shoa Shida, which is a wicked fight, 24-0. You're going back to Birmingham? Yep, at some point, whether that's end of September or October. What about Luke Campbell? Luke Campbell. Linares looks like he's boxing in September. I've heard he's going to fight Argenius Mendes, which is... Campbell's already beaten him. Mm. Uh, may put Campbell on that card. And then box Linares against Campbell in December. Katie Taylor. Katie Taylor uh, is going to box in America. She may go on the uh, Ndongo card, or mm. maybe Garcia Broner if we get that card on Sky. Mm. Um, what else? What else? Tommy Coyle looking for a big fight for him. Dodd, Dodd Cardle free. Any takers in Liverpool? I like Tom Farrell against Tommy Coyle. That's one I was looking at for Liverpool as well. Um, and then loads of the London boys. The Sauce, Akoli. Him against Chamberlain. I think he's a big fight for the yeah. new season at some point. What about, who's he going to fight on that other card? On the first of Henshaw. Russell Henshaw, yeah. 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 Uh, so then you've got Conor Benz back on July the 1st. You've got Buglioni. I'd like to make Buglioni Burton. The rematch there. Um... Charlie Edwards got to fight Chanda. That's, I think, going to be on the September card as well. Reese Bellotti, I want him to fight for the British title in September. Jake Ball's going to fight for the English title, it looks like. Um, again, there's loads I'm sure I've missed out. Craig Richards, looking to fight him for a title. I think he's close to a British title shot now. Um, who am I missing out to? Because someone's going to get the ump and then text me later. And oh, Reese Bellotti. I've said him. Oh, Reese Bellotti said Cheeseman. For, yeah, Cheeseman. He's got an English title fight, British title eliminator. I'm presuming that Liam um, Williams will give up the British and Ted will fight for that after. Um, Who's on Martin anyone else? Ward's got a fight, Kakachi. That's a good fight. New Bank yeah. undercard, yeah. Um, Josh Kelly's moving real quick. Anthony Fowler wants to move quick. Who's signing anyone else? No, we're full. Done. Yeah. Done for the what? Done. For the foreseeable the next future. Two weeks. Um, Frankie Gavin, he's got to be slung in in a big fight. Gamalia Fire. Gamalia Fire, Gavin McDonald. Mm. Any takers? Mm. I want to start putting the guys together, you know? Like, mm. paying them real good money and saying, go on, son, good luck to you. Like, Crawler, Burns. Um. There's going to be like one or two that I've missed out who are just Probably. thinking you've gone through everyone. Just quickly go Isaac through. Isaac Chamberlain was done. Right. Heavyweight. Cruiserweight. Callum right. Johnson. Callum, Callum Johnson. Johnson, look at coming back um, in the summer. Then we'd want him to fight. Uh, I actually said to Joe, do you want to fight Dimitri Bivol for the world title? Because eventually Nathan's going to have to go out and fight Ward for the super title. A fucking tough fight that is, Bivol. But why not? Did you see him the other night? Yeah, good fire. Um, Marcus Morrison's coming back, actually, on the JD card on Friday. Is um, he on that card? Yeah, Marcus, yeah. yeah. Oh, good. Um, 
Kel. Fitz, Scott Fitzgerald. Uh, Kel's out of action now till probably December. Will he fight in December? I hope so. I spoke to him yesterday. He had a really good operation. A lot easier to, to deal with and manage in the first stop. So he's very hopeful at the moment um, that that is going to be fine. Scott Fitzgerald looking at probably one more fight and him in for titles. Um, yeah. If I've missed you out, I'm very sorry. Mm. I do love you. And I'm on you. I'm the case for you. i tell you what, if you've missed anyone out, on their next uh, purse or whatever, stick a monkey on. <laughs> Go on, just because you forgot them. I'll tell you what, we'll do that. Yeah? Yeah. If <laughs> you want <laughs> Got about two minutes. Uh, can I just go and check on the computer? No, all right, I haven't got me pad in front of me. You know, haven't mentioned your on. name. Then yeah, you have got five hundred quid in the kitty, courtesy of IFL TV. Yeah. Stuart right. Hall. He's boxing on set on Stuart Friday. Stuart. He's boxing in Newcastle. I think I've already mentioned him, but I've actually got quite a big fight lined up for Stuart Hall. I like Stuart Hall. Yeah. What? Stephen Smith. You mentioned Stephen Smith. Did I? Yeah, oh, yeah, I did for the world title against yeah, Corrales. Yeah. Okay, go on, go on. <laughs> <laughs> you think so hard. Kel, Eggington, Gavin, right middle, Cheeseman, Fitzgerald, Fowler, middle. We're a bit low on the middles, really. Yeah. Um. Middle, Rocky, Cox, Callum, DeGale. Light Heavy, Callum Johnson, Buglioni, Burton, Cruiser, Coley, Chamberlain, Mike Perez, uh, Bellew, Heavyweight, Josh, Light Heavyweight, Boatsy. I mean, I think we're good, you know. Flyweight, Super Flyweight, Cow, Charlie Edwards, Brandon Weight, Jamie McDonald. Stuart Hall, Super Bantam, Gamalia Fire, Gavin McDonnell, Feather, Reese Bellotti. Go on. What weight? See if you can get it. Go on, weight. MGM Fighter, Feather weight, or oh, Super Bantam weight. Feather weight? Super Bantam weight. Boxed in Belfast. I'm from Asian. Wales. Oh, um, Sean McGoldrick. Nah. You've missed one as well. What weight? <laughs> Is it a champ? <laughs> Is it a champ? Say, you've missed one. But hold I'm on. not going to tell on, you. Hold on, hold on. I'm going to let one person have the monkey. No, I feel really bad. The only way I can tell you is if you agree to give this person the money. No, not yet. How long have we got left? We've got 142 seconds. Okay. <laughs> I mean, is this a full... What? what are we saying? Brian Rose? John Ryder? I mean, are we saying like... No, it's not either of them, but you can mention them. But there's one. I reckon you, if I've said that, something's triggered your mind. Yeah, there is. Oh, Jesus. What? I'm so sorry. Go on. Joey Caldina. There's still someone is else. There? Yeah. Ed, I swear yeah, to God, you've got 120 anyway. seconds. I thought you'd got it then. Katie Taylor. I never mentioned that. No. 100 seconds. I'm 99% certain you have not mentioned this person. Super feather. Craig Richards, Jake Paul, Ted Cheeseman, Isaac Chamberlain, Reese Bellotti, Martin Moore, Sean McGonagall, Joe Caldina, Josh Kelly, Fowler, Boatsy, Jesse Jones. <laughs> this is riveting viewing. You've got 70 seconds. Give me a clue, right, and give me the opportunity to just give him 250 quid. Well, you've got to give him 250 yeah. quid. Um, what?
won his last fight. Oh, fucking hell, they've all won their last fight. Won his last fight. Championship level or not? Borderline. You've got to give him two and a half either way now. Championship level, borderline. Borderline. Won his last fight. Yes. And the person he beat wasn't happy. Scoring, in fact. <laughs> this is going to be a monkey. Go on. Monkey? Go to on. this person? What? you got to agree. Go Who topped your Liverpool card last, uh, la uh, last April? Martin Murray, I've just got you 500 quid. Martin Murray, you've got 500 quid. Fucking hell. How can I miss Murray? Eddie Hearn, thank you very oh, much for talking to it. IFL TV. Bad now. Charity of your choice or in your skyrocket, but I think charity of your choice. Charity of your choice. Fucking hell. Anyway, I'll tell you on Martin Murray, looking for a big fight. Billy Joe Saunders, you need a big fight. Martin Murray's ready. Eight, seven, Martin Murray, Paul Smith. Six, five. Thank you very Don't, much, Eddie Hearn. I can't believe that.